talk. Please be seated. ASAP. Uh, hello, Brent Jones. Brent Jones, please be seated. <laughs> Those who are still snacking in the snacking room, please be seated. Please come back to your seat as soon as possible. Suggests I will be talking about uh, my research on Darlingtonia Californica today. Um, and uh, just to pre preface this, um, I am a field ecologist by training, so. I really uh, started studying Darlingtonia uh, mostly as a matter of convenience. Um, and as you'll see uh, through my research in using Darlingtonia simply for a utilitarian purpose, I really come to appreciate uh, many of the nuances of the species' natural history and uniqueness that I also will talk about today. え、私、ユーロエコロジストとして活躍してまいりました。and um, I, uh, I also hope that uh, many of you hoping to or trying to grow Darlingtonia yourselves may be able to take away uh, some information from this talk, even though uh, I personally cannot grow the plant, and uh, in fact, I can barely grow any carnivorous plants, and probably we shouldn't, shouldn't allow to uh, even keep them in uh, captivity. Yes, and uh, so here you can see a uh, uh, herbarium pressing of Darlingtonia that we made uh, a few years ago for our botanical collections. Um, you can see that it is now dead. Um, by, <laughs> by choice. <laughs> and it's worth pointing out the uh, unique evolutionary history of Darlingtonia, and its uniqueness uh, lies in part 
um, in the fact that it is so distantly diverged from its uh, closest relatives, uh, Heliamphora and Saracenia. So you can see that the split between Darlingtonia and the group containing Heliamphora and Saracenia occurred approximately 25 to 45 million years ago. So about half the time to the dinosaurs. で、so here you can see uh, the prey trapping apparatus of Darlingtonia, the downward facing, uh, the downward facing um, uh, pole, operculum, as you might call it. And uh, so it's very different, obviously, from most other Saracenia. Uh, there are a few exceptions. Um, and this, you also see this large appendage here, which many people call the tongue, which has led uh, to the common name of the uh, cobra plant. Yes, uh, looking inside of the leaf, you can see uh, a large amount of insects uh, that have been trapped in this particular uh, leaf here. Um, and what is notable is uh, there is a gradient of decomposition that is apparent with the fresh insects up here and uh, the completely digested insects at the bottom, which uh, has led me to characterize uh, Darlingtonia sort of as a uh, digestive system without an anus. <laughs> a digestive system without an anus. <laughs> And rather than relying on digestive enzymes to uh, break down this prey, as many other carnivorous plants do, these plants instead rely on this little food chain here, which comprises uh, midge larvae, which you can see here, um, of the genus Metrionemus edwardsi. Uh, here we have also mites, which I will show you a closer picture of in a minute. And these uh, arthropods tend to chew up the large insects and break them down, defecate them out, um, at which point bacteria uh, and fungi and other microorganisms uh, break down that, uh, that, uh, those species uh, further into uh, forms of nitrogen that the host plant, uh, the pitcher leaf, can take up. で、一番最初に左のところで罠にかかった虫たちなんですけども、これ酵素を身体中に、え、ダーリントニアは消化することができるようなんですね。で、っていうのがその、その体の中にですね、ダーリントニアの食、体の中に、まあ、歯の中に
、えー、とメトリオ,オ,オネームスエドワルジそれから、えー、とそのようなものに媒体を頼みで少し分解を助けてもらっている様子がわかります。Here you can see the mites chewing on uh, pitcher, uh, pitcher uh, detritus and uh, the midge you just saw swimming around.、Uh, these mites, I'll play it again, these mites and midges are found only in Darlingtonia, nowhere else on earth. でこのダニミッジというものはダーリントニアの中にしか存在していないということが分かっております。すみません、先ほどちょっと言い忘れたんですけども、えっと、この食物連鎖で、えー、微生物を介して分解消化を行った後、窒素が出るんですね。そしてこの窒素が葉に吸収されるというところを申し訳ございません。言うの忘れております。We can zoom in further and see the single celled microorganisms. We have,、uh, Protists swimming around, and all of the little things swimming around are bacteria. And actually, the concentrations of bacteria in the pitcher plant fluid are higher than we find even in the human digestive system. これ全部バクテリアなんですけれどもこの葉っぱの液の中にあるバクテリア濃度なんですがこれは日本に人間の消化液よりも濃度的に濃いということを分かっています。ダーリントニアは、uh, so, uh, 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 ね、非常に広い地方の中に。ウェスダーリントニアなんですがあのダーリントニアはこの地理的にかなりいろんなところに分散している分布が非常に分散しているという特徴がありますで今一番左端に起こ映っているのがもともとのネイティブなところ固有として生息がある自,足自生しているところがアメリカのカリフォルニアの南西部です And so now I will take you on a brief tour of all of the different habitats that we find Darlingtonia in.、Um, I went on a long voyage last summer, starting up here and driving all the way down, visiting all of these little dots and collecting samples. And so I will show you photos of some of the unique habitats、uh, in which we find the species. でえー、こちら、えー、今からなんですけれども、皆さんをちょっとツアーにお連れしたいと思います。ダーリントニアの生息地をいろいろと回ってまいりました。去年の夏行ったんですけれども、えー、コースタルオレゴン、オレゴンの海岸地域、海岸部から、えー、シスキーヨウ山脈、ポリリティ山脈、シエラネバダまで、全部あの点々の黒の点がついているところを全部回ってまいりました。でここでサンプルを採集してきました。でこ,のこの時に生息地非常にユニークだなと思われるような写真をいっぱい撮ってきましたので、お見せいたします。And, and And this soil type is very、uh, special and unique、um, botanically because many plants、uh, cannot tolerate the high levels. Of magnesium, cobalt, nickel, and iron in the soil,、uh, and the relatively low amount of nitrogen. So,、uh, these specific areas、uh, host a very unique、uh, community of plants that are only found there. で特徴として一つ面白いのが、土壌がですね、サーペンテスと呼ばれる土壌なんですね。ジャモンガ。ジャモンガ。ジャモンガと呼ばれる、えー、土の質がジャモンガと呼ばれる、えー、土になっております。で、これ非常に、えー、植物学の上では非常に面白いことになっておりまして、この土に関してはマグネシウム、コバルト、ニッケル、それから鉄分が非常に高い。なので、他の植物は生きていけないんです。
、でしかもナイトロジェンに窒素が非常に含有量が少ないということで、え他の植物には適していないけれども、おダーリンプニアなどといった特定の植物に対しては非常にコスト的な存在になる、住みやすい地域を提供してくれるということです。Um, for precipitation,、uh, you can see generally these plants are found in、uh, montane regions with more precipitation than the very dry surrounding habitat.、Um, but you can see in Oregon here, corresponding to these,、uh, this population up here,、uh, it's much wetter than the populations in the California mountains. 次に雨量に関しての情報なんですけれども、雨量としては、このザーリントニアが生息しているところは、どちらかというと雨が多いところが多い、乾燥というよりも雨が多いところが多いんですね。今、このオレゴン、キングラブのオレゴンなんですが、オレゴンでは雨が多いようです。カリフォルニアに対してと比べて、雨量は多いそうです。So, this is the northernmost Known population of Darlingtonia.、Uh, although I hesitate to call it a population because I think maybe it's only one or two plants. And I also suspect that it has been planted here. And I will show you why I think that at the end of the talk. It is on the roadside、uh, in a place called Sand Lake, Oregon. Very beautiful. But、um, you can see if you've ever seen Darlingtonia in the wild. Uh, very different types of plants and vegetation surrounding uh, what, you,、uh, wouldn't ex- what you would expect for a typical Darlingtonia habitat. This is the first one. Darlingtonia is the first one. It 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 is the first one. 人口,人口というかグループというふうにはよく意味がふさわしくないなと思われます。しかもこのダーリントニアなんですが、植えられたんじゃないかなというふうに、ステイというよりも植えたんじゃないのという可能性があるなと思います。というのが、えー、とこれは後でまた説明いたしますね。でこちらオレゴンのサンドレイクと呼ばれるところなんですが、非常に美しいこと,ところでございます。で野生のダーリントニアの周りに生えている草。というのはまた特性があるんですが、それがこのダーリントニアに関しては少し周りにある植物が少し違っているなと感じました。Uh, I don't have a scale here, but these pictures are very small. However, they are flowering. You can see、uh, there was a flower somewhere. <laughs> Back there. Okay, now we will move south. Oops. This is、uh, one of the、uh, northernmost sites、uh, in Florence, Oregon. Many have probably visited this place because it is famous,、uh, called Darlingtonia Wayside. こちらなんですが、えっと、これも西北端の一部でフローレンスと呼ばれる地域でございます。でかなり有名な場所なんですね。でダーリントニアウェイサイトと呼ばれる看板が立っています。It is a very large population、uh, that receives a very large amount of rainfall. はい、ダーリントニアが群生しております。それから雨も非常に多いです。Just south of this site is a slightly different habitat. This、uh, is the marshy shores of a very large lake in Oregon. And I think that most of the next sites I will show in Oregon are characterized by. Bodies of water that are actually quite deep. So I went in here with boots on and decided way too deep. So then I had to put waders on way too deep. <laughs> so I just had to put my swimsuit on. <laughs> <laughs> で入っているみたいな感じで最初はブーツ長靴みたいなのでいけるかなと思って入っていったんですがあのやっぱりダメで今度は漁師が
ジュルみたいなこう胸まであるようなああいうのを着てみたんですけどそれでも溺れそうになりまして結局水着に着替えました This is probably the most unique Darlingtonia site. It is approximately 100 meters from the ocean, which is on the other side of this、uh, sand dune here. Very few plants.、Um, and it's characterized again by、uh, cold, flowing, spring fed water running down the side of the hill. Nearby, another deep,、uh, deep pond. I fell in off of the log trying to climb over into the water. But again, Darlingtonia found on large mats of floating moss. でこちらもまた水が深いところになりまして池なんですがこれ結構深い池で私この池に落ちましたで、えー、今ダーリントニアなんですがこのモス苔の上に生えている生息しているようです One more interesting site very close to the ocean again maybe 100 meters and then the beach、uh, Here we have ダーリントニア in a very Very grassy、uh, little marsh here.、はい、でこちらもまた少し変わった写真になるんですが、ここなんですけど、非常に海に近い場所にありまして、えー、浜辺、ビーチまで100メートルぐらいのところなんです。ただ、ここなんですが、ダーリントニアが生息しているところにしては、草が多い、草原がある、草原の多い湿地帯という感じです。Now we can move into the central habitat of Darlingtonia. Here we are、um, in the、uh, Klamath Mountains,、uh, the Siskiyou region of、uh, Northern California and Southern Oregon.And here we see some of the tallest pictures physically, maybe one meter tall, maybe some even taller than that,、uh, growing along these spring fed seeps、uh, on the mountainside. Slightly more inland,、uh, it gets drier, but the Darlingtonia、uh, habitat gets even larger and the populations get much bigger. So now we are back in southern Oregon、uh, on the other side of the mountains. またこちらで南オレゴンの方に戻ってまいりました。でここなんですが、少し内陸の方に入ってまいりますので、少し乾燥しています。あまり湿っておりません。ただ、えー、こ,のこの辺りに行きますと、ポピュレーション、えー、的に、群衆的に広がっていきます。それから、生息している場所もまた大きくなっています。This is probably the driest habitat I have recorded Darlingtonia growing in.、Uh, it is,、um, You can see some of the plants right there, but everything else is completely dry except for a small trickle of、uh, cold spring fed water.、はい
、えー、と少しずつ緑のところがちょろちょろとあるだけであとはほとんど乾燥していますよね石みたいな茶色みたいな感じになっておりましてこの植物が完確認できるところは湧き水でできているという感じです。Next, we move into this large,、uh, this large mountainous area called the Trinity Alps in northern California. This, these sites are much farther away from the ocean and much higher elevation. So, here I have taken a picture of the habitat that contains the highest elevation Darlingtonia populations、uh, growing off the、uh, slopes of Mount Eddy. でえー、こちらなんですが、えー、カリフォルニア北部のトリニティ・アルプスというところでございます。でこ,こ,からこれは海からかなり離れた場所にありますが、海抜あ標高が非常に高いですので、今回の撮影の中で、ダーリントニアが観測された中の一番標高が高いところじゃないかなと思われます。エリ yes. Here, the harsh winters、uh, keep the plants、uh, very short and small, I believe. Probably because of the com combination of high winds and very、uh, low temperatures. And I also have noticed that、uh, the effects of、uh, environmental change, possibly due to climate change, may be amplified. At these higher elevations. Ten years ago, there was Darlingtonia growing all throughout this gray area, and just within ten years, it's dried up, and this is all that remains. Into the southern populations where I have primarily done my research,、uh, this area was、uh, impacted by one of the largest forest fires ever recorded in California called the Dixie Fire in、uh, the summer and autumn of 2021, whereby 3,900 hectares were burned in those months, which,、uh, to put it in proportion, is three times the area of Okinawa Jima. はい、でこちらなんですが、えー、今、四角が囲っているあるところですね、南の方に移動しております。でここが私の今回のリサーチに関して、ここで主にリサーチをしました。なんですが、この場所なんですけれども、アメリカで2021年の夏および冬に起こった、えー、大規模な森林火災、歴史上本当に、えーまあ、に見るほどの規模のディクシー火災というのがあるんですが、この影響を受けております。でその時実に3900ヘクタールの土地、森林が失われました。そのサイズは沖縄の本島かなの3倍の広さのものが消失されました。This is what my field site looked like when I arrived last year, and I was very worried. 去年、ついついこんな感じだったんですね。非常に、あ、これは危険と思いました。But then I turned around, and as you can see, The pitcher plant fed has persisted. So, this is well known that、uh, Darlingtonia、uh, and the fens that it occupies can、uh, resist fire quite well. But I was very surprised simply because of the intensity of this fire、uh, that. These populations survived. There are still some problems, though. 
This is uh, a, one of my research sites in 2014 photographed. And here we see what that patch looks like in 2022. This is in the famous Butterfly Valley Botanical Area, which is also a popular tourist destination for viewing pitcher plants. And this uh, issue primarily occurred because of a road, which is right here, being trafficked and the cars compacting the soil, preventing water from flowing uh, in this direction anymore. But there has been uh, major restoration efforts by the Forest Service, and now some of these plants are regrowing. Here are the southernmost sites of Darlingtonia uh, in a very remote uh, area of the Sierra Nevada mountains. Again, at a slightly higher elevation, and the pictures are much smaller. And finally, the southernmost population on private lands where you can find the uh, anthocyanin deficient uh, Othello morph. Um, I couldn't find it there, though. Uh, Othello. Yes. It's a uh, white, yeah. Okay. Anthocyanin. <laughs> So, I will briefly introduce my research on Darlingtonia. As uh, I mentioned earlier, I was studying the pitcher plants earliest because they are a useful model system to understand the ecological process of succession. で、これが我々私がお話ししてきた一冊活動のま、概要です。で、え、一着ランドをの研究を始めたのはやはりこのモデル的ピッチャープランドというテーブスがあの一つのモデルとして役に立って研究がしやすいからあその便利だからその研究
So to do this, we can identify unopened pitcher leaves, which uh, do not have any bacteria inside of their chambers, and follow them through time over the period of a year, sampling their microbial communities and studying their functional roles uh, as that time progresses. で、まだ子供の代わりにとにはを、を、変えまして、で、これまだ子供の中で、この中にまだ虫が捕まっていないわけですよね。で、これをサンプルとして使いました。で、この、この時間をして、どんな変化が起きて、起きていくのか、それが
で44日後がピークなんですねでここから先は上に変えませんつまり上限が44日44日ということが分かりました Uh, I also detected pitcher communities become more similar to one another through time during their first year of life and then become more different. And I will skip some slides here. <laughs> because I think you'll like this more. <laughs> Next, I was bored out in the field, so I decided to throw ants into pitcher fluid and see what happened. So here, water. Here, Darlingtonia fluid. Uh, fluid from Nepenthes. And these are uh, collections of uh, pitcher bacteria that have been enriched in water containing dead insects. So not from the pitcher, but just the bacteria from the pitcher. Notice that the pitcher fluids seem to have stunning properties or perhaps、uh, properties that allow the ants to drown more easily. We can quantify this by measuring the surface tension of the fluid that is found in each of those containers and comparing them. And we find that in natural Darlingtonia fluid, as well as the enrichments of the pitcher bacteria, The surface tension lies lower than water and higher than ethanol, but it makes it perhaps easier for the insects to fall through the surface. Uh, we can see that that、uh, pitcher fluid, as well as the bacterial enrichment, traps all of the insects that、uh, I threw in there versus water, which only traps. 25% after observing them for、uh, two or t h Finding that as we dilute pitcher fluid,、uh, it becomes easier、uh, with water, it becomes easier for prey to escape. Okay, and finally, I will talk about、uh, some of the Putative adaptations that have been named as,、uh, as adaptations for prey capture, specifically the role of the、uh, tongue appendage. And you can see many studies or many people have claimed that it、uh, is some sort of adaptation to help the plant capture prey.、Uh, we will test that. はい、次、最後になりますけれども、このおひれ、おひれ状の葉っぱありますよね、これ、皆さん、タングと呼んでいるものだと思うんですけれども
えこれによって、えー、アダプテーションというものを行いよりたくさんの獲物を捕まえることに使われていると考えられていますがそれが本当にどうなのかということを調べていますこれは本当に簡単な方法なのですが、えー、それが実際に、えー、ピッチャーが使われていますので、えー、これを切り取ってもいいんですけれども、例えばポキュレーションとして全体的にたくさんの軍団、えー、ザーリントン軍をで全ての単語を切り取って実験ということも試みました。This does not kill the leaf, and we can come back at the end of the summer and measure how much prey each leaf has trapped. でこれでこれによって植物が死んでしまうということはありません。夏が終わった頃にまた戻って中を開けてみてどれぐらいの獲物が引っかかっているのかということを確認できます。So here are the results. We find removal of the、uh, tongue of the leaf or at the population level does not affect、uh, prey capture amounts in the leaves. はい、結果が出ました。えー、このタングを切り取ることによって、えー And in fact, it may,、uh, if we want an explanation for its persistence、uh, through evolutionary history, perhaps we can think of it as a facilitative mechanism for,、um, for photosynthesis because it does contain、um, high, high, high ish amounts of chlorophyll in shaded habitats. でこれっておそらくなんですが、この進化の度合いを説明してくれる、進化するときに非常に強い進化を見せているダーリントニアなんですが、それが説明するのじゃないかなと思います。でこのメカニズムとして、光合成、それからクロロフィルの配合をに助けられているのではないかと考えています。I'm almost out of time, but I will just talk very briefly about some other work we are currently doing in my lab. The first of which tests The question of whether or not we think of the relationship between pitcher plants and prey as a predator prey relationship, or perhaps we can think of it、uh, more correctly as a mutually beneficial relationship, because the plant、uh, probably feeds a lot of insects more than it captures from their populations. And I will skip over the methods and everything, but just to tell you, we have preliminary evidence that this is the case using stable isotopes. Yeah, so I, I visited that site also last year in、um, Albion, California. And、um, I believe it was planted by、um, uh, Peter D'Amato and his cronies <laughs> maybe in the 70s.、Um, you go there and you'll find a forest of 
Drosera venata, you'll find Saracenia growing out there. It's just, you know, beyond my uh, expectations to find Darlingtonia being able to make it out there. And another line of evidence for that is we don't find the, uh, we don't find any of the midge symbionts in the introduced populations, yet we find them in every single uh, natural population. Uh, did you find a mechanism for the protesis in the bacteria getting from picture to picture? I believe they are either, I believe that they either travel on the insects that are captured, or they can travel through the uh, xylem as the plant sort of regulates uh, fluid levels internally. <laughs> Darlingtonia can physiologically regulate uh, fluid levels, uh, unlike a lot of other uh, species. So they, um, yeah, from anywhere from bone dry to like 30 milliliters or 50. Of the morphology of Darlington, it looks like quite difficult to escape. How yeah. insects can escape? 
Um, Do you have any hairs? Yeah, I mean, they, if they're oh. strong enough, they can escape, I think. Like, I've oh. seen, uh, I've seen uh, numerous. Uh, uh, I think it can escape. Yeah, they can. Oh. I mean, yeah, the, when there's water in there, they can pretty easily climb back up. Thanks. あ、I'm not so convinced that it's natural. Again, because we have zero uh, lights nor midges present in these, and like they find their way into every like r real natural population that we know of. The second line of evidence I would have to say that it's uh, planted. Even the lar I know the larger population you're talking about, um, which is like super hard to get to. Uh, people people have also said that there used to be a nursery down the road from there like really close and I, I think it's highly possible that they were planted there by whoever ran that nursery or something. I, you know, so we took genetic data from this site and we're doing the sequencing now and so we will be able to tell exactly which of those other black dots that that uh, sand lake population is most closely related to. So maybe we'll have our answer then. It's possible. It's definitely a, a hypothesis.
姿勢的に長いところなので遠く遠かったしいろんなところ行っていただいてありがとうございましたただそこに入あ生息しているダーリントンまたは食虫植物なんですが非常に危機にさらされているあのケミカルの問題もありますし他にもいろんなあ危機に瀕していると思いますで、えー、ローレンスにあったエコロジーは他のところと似ているのか生態系ですねそれが似ているのか、無意識も見つかりますかということと、それから、えー、それに関しては確かイエスとおっしゃってたと思うんです、でただ、そのおナチュラルせせせ、戦前の生息地ではないのではないかという、でえー、マイト、ダニア、ミッチがいないところもいるし、で,でもそこでもう生息されているということは、やはり、えー、自然のハビタット、自然の生息地ではない,ではな,いなかろうかと。で今後なんですが、えー、その遺伝子のシーケンシングというものをちゃんと行っていけば、そこの生息地の黒いドットのところですね、これとそれから、えー、その塊と塊の関係というものがはっきりと示されるように、関係性が示されるようになるのではないかということで、えー、それを期待していただきたいと思います。だったと思います。Thanks everyone. Unfortunately, the time is up, and、uh, thank you so much for such an interesting talk. Thank you.